Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host, author, Pastor Denise and Walker, Pastor of Hope in Christ Ministries, Evangelism Ministries. And here at Hope in Christ, we are maintaining a healthy relationship with Christ. We are overcomers in Christ. We have purpose in Christ. And we maintain an eternal perspective because that's what's the most important thing that um, it is in life. And so we're going to begin with a word of prayer and then we'll begin today's show. Father, we thank you again for your word is true. Father, we pray, Lord God, that we don't have transformation. We don't have healing. We don't have peace we don't have joy we don't have anything outside of you so father we thank you oh god for your word rescuing us oh god your word transforming us oh god your word convicting us of our sin father we pray oh god that we would be transformed by the renewing of our mind through the washing of your word and the blood of jesus christ as we walk in relationship father we thank you and we praise you for those that are listening. We pray that we would receive your truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. We have another devotional moment. We've been doing a lot of devotionals lately, um, just digging into the word, either by one particular word that we're studying or by phrases from the Bible that we begin to study and so today we're going to be talking about our walk how is your walk how is my walk how is everyone's walk and um not physically but spiritually we're going to talk about that and our scripture is from romans chapter number eight verse one through seventeen so we're going to begin with the reading of God's word, and then we will begin to discuss um, how our walk should look. This is the New King James Version of the Bible, and I'm going to start from verse number one. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that, it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On the account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is the enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. That is Romans chapter 8, 1 through 17. 1 through 17. And according to the Global Study Bible, Paul celebrates the new life of the spirit that Christians enjoy as a result of Christ's saving work. So this is all an outline of Christ's saving work. So we're going to look at my particular outline and then we'll look a little bit more, talk a little bit more about the Global Study Bible and what it, its commentary says about Romans chapter number 8, verses 1 through 17. And so as I was reading and outlining, because for me, I write in journals because it sticks with me. The Word of God sticks with me or anything that I've read sticks with me more when I'm writing because I'm, I am visual kinesthetic and so um i started with there is no now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus and that's my letter a that's the first part of my outline now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus and then i began to put under there the reasons why why we're not condemned those of us that are in Christ Jesus, those of us that are taking um, a re the walk of relationship with Christ and have been transformed and redeemed and restored in Christ Jesus because we couldn't do it on our own. Um, we walk in him and um, we're redeemed in him. And so why are we not condemned? Because condemn condemnation is the opposite of redemption. And so... Um, when we're condemned the only one that can condemn if we read a little bit further the word does say that that christ is the only one that can condemn because he's the creator we can't condemn anybody that's why the word um tells us not to um we we don't have the right we don't have the right to condemn anyone because that's the job of the lord himself and so there is no condemnation to those who are in notice the word there the preposition in Christ Jesus, not outside of Christ, but in Christ. Now, Christ, who? Christos, um, the living God in the Hebrew, Yeshua, the one true and living God. Um, so in him, walking in him, in the power of his resurrection, his resurrection power and what he has done in our lives. And so um, why are we not condemned? And the word tells us, and so we're gonna. I'm just gonna read from my outline, and then we can. I'll talk through it. Um, who do not walk according to the flesh. So if we're in Christ Jesus, we are not no longer walking in the flesh, in the carnal way of living, the way we used to live. Um, so it says, who do not walk according to the flesh, and then we go into the other parts of this particular scripture. How does that look? They walk according to the Spirit of God. Um, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made them free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus alone has made that person free from sin and death. The law couldn't do it. Um, the physical law couldn't do it. Um, it was weak. Through the flesh so people in the old testament the um old testament hebrews tried to keep the law and and of course we if we read the old testament we know and notice how that turned out and it says that that couldn't happen because of the weakness of the flesh and then it goes on to say god did not buy um did it by sending christ in the likeness of sinful flesh so in the likeness of sinful flesh christ came um 
And then it says he condemned sin in the flesh. Um, the righteous requirement of the law was fulfilled in us. So as we are in Christ, we are not condemned because of the work of Christ. Because His He of who he is and our relationship with him. Um, and then it goes further to say um, we set our mind on the things according to the spirit of God. So those that are believers, those that are in Christ Jesus, um, set our minds on the things of the Spirit of God, not on the things of the flesh. We are spiritually minded, um, and there's life and peace because of the spiritual mindset. And um, Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. And then the second part of the outline goes into those that walk according to the flesh the, the so this was the one that i just read was according to the spirit and not being any condemnation when you're walking according to the spirit but according to the flesh there is condemnation to that because there's no that person is not in christ um and christ does condemn because the word says that you're condemned already if that relationship is not there and so um and then it says, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, the carnal things of the flesh. Um, and then it says they're in enmity against God. They're at war. They are enemies of God. They're not subject to the law of God, nor can they be. And they cannot please God those that walk according to the flesh they don't have the spirit of christ and they are not christ they don't belong to christ so walking in the flesh versus walking in the spirit are two different things and i and i wanted to talk about that you know and what walk means first of all the word walk is an is a verb is an action so i have to participate in my walk I have to participate actively in my relationship with Christ because the word here again we go back to it it says that those that do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so that means that I have chosen if I'm walking that means I'm making some kind of choice to do what I'm doing and so if I'm walking according to the spirit I'm not a robot. God didn't make us robots. So we had to make some sort of choice to begin to walk in the spirit and also those that walk in the flesh. Now, the, the only thing is, is that when one is walking in the flesh, they may believe that they're in, they're pleasing to God. And the word we can see here is that it's far from the truth and that that, that person does not please God and then it goes on to tell us um, some other things about the flesh and the spirit so it also says the flesh um, living according to the flesh you will die you will die spiritually it will die spiritually that means you're separated from the spirit of God and you are blinded you're blinded to understanding about the things of God because you're walking according to the flesh. And then in the spirit, it says, if living by the spirit, you put to death. Again, that's another action. It says, you put to death the deeds of the body, the deeds of your flesh, the, the different things that the Bible talks about, um, sexual perversion, um, all kinds of different things. We put to put to death those deeds of the flesh, lying, um, all all kinds of things. We put to death because we're now walking in the spirit. Um, we have the fruit of the spirit. We're sons of God. Um, receive the spirit of adoption, and the spirit himself bears witness that we are the children of God. We're heirs of God, and we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to talk about more and more about walking in the spirit. 
the spirit makes intercession for the believer um this is the word of god the saints it calls um it uses the word saints um all things work together for the good to those who are um who love god and are called according to his purpose um they're justified called and glorified and then and who can be against those that are in christ no one that's a rhetorical question um freely gives us all things as we walk in the liberty and freedom in christ jesus and so that's that's my outline i just i just simply took the scripture and i put it under the um content that it, it um went with and so it, again how is my walk how is my walk am i walking according to the flesh or am i walking according to the spirit and in today's world that we find ourselves living in, sometimes we may think because it's so like it's kind of like a gray area. Area it's kind of like everything is blended all together, and that's not so because God's word didn't change. People change. People want to philosophize God's word, but God's word never changed. His word says. That heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will not. Until it's fulfilled. What he set it out to fulfill. And so many. We can keep trying to change the Bible. We can keep trying to um, listen to all of these philosophers. And different things. And, and I've heard so many things over the years. Where people would say things like. Well you know I'm kind of debating what that says in the Bible. There's no debate. There's, there's, there's no debate for us. We don't debate because God is God and his word is his word. And either we believe it or we don't. And that's for me. That's for my family. That's for anybody. We have to get back to the, the core, which is God and, and Christ alone and him crucified. And what we being sinners and we... um sin against God. See, what that's where we get confused. A lot of times people will say, you, 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 you're judging me or, um, you know, different things. But the Bible says that God is our judge, first of all, and that he judges our heart intent. So God knows whether or not we have intended to live how we want to live. And then, if that be so, he's never going to, uh, he's not going to make us. He's not going to make us follow or do what he says because he didn't make us robots. He gave us something called a free will. And so um, I find myself, you know, just talking to the youth when I'm teaching them that um, at church and, 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 you know, different times that God gave us a free will. Cause in, because I believe that the free will is not just for that, but the free will is to come into the understanding of God for ourselves. And then we fall in love with God for ourselves. Nobody made us. God won't even make us. He won't violate our will. He won't violate what we want. Um, I remember one time just studying and God said, um, you know, that sometimes we can make things, people, sin, even sins, idols. And they become our little G, our little God. And we think it's Christ we're serving, but we're not. Because he says in his word, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? And then in Romans, it clearly says that we, um, when you walk after the flesh, you, you cannot please God and you um, cannot be subject to the law of God because it, you're not able to because you're walking in the flesh and not after the spirit the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh of God. And so we have to get back to the core, which is God's word. How are we walking? We don't, nobody sets that standard but God. We have to give an account for our lives to God and God alone. Nobody else. So when we, when, you know, a lot of times when we say, you know, this person is judging or, or no, people, we, we don't have a right to judge. But God is God. He gave us life. He put purpose in us. He created us. So we do have an account to give to him. 
How did we live our lives? Um, and yes, we're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect, but we're made we're made perfect in Christ. So when we stand in Christ Jesus and we live it, uh, by His strength and not our own, and I can just share, and I think I've shared some of my testimony before, but I've I, I've I was on the side of walking after the flesh. I, I walked after the flesh for a long time, and, and there were times that I wanted to continue. To, because I, I just thought that I could fix myself. And I found out that I couldn't. I found out the hard way that I couldn't. And at some point in my, my walk after the flesh, I, I knew there was no peace. There was no peace there. And so I began to ask questions and, and wonder that there was more. There's more to this life than living how I want to live because it's emptiness. Living how I want to live was empty. I would go to the club. I would come home. I would do this and I would come home and I was empty. But it wasn't until over 20 years ago that I came to understand Christ that I felt filled, fulfilled. And I began even more and more to seek after him. And I know sometimes people may think, okay, you're just, you know, you keep saying the same thing. But it's the truth. We live in a time where the Bible does speak of the great falling away. But God is so merciful. Because the word also says that Jesus tarries. That means he waits to return because he don't desire that any would perish but that all would come to repentance. So if I have to come to repentance, that means my walk has to be a certain way. Because if I didn't have to come to repentance, then there's no need for this, even us even thinking about these scriptures. But he said, the word says that he tarries not because he's lacking his promise, but that he desires that no one would perish, but that everyone would come to repentance. That's God's desire. That's Christ's desire that all of us, each and every one of us, would come to repentance. So when people say that I can live how I want to live, or in a new world, in a new age, in a new age of saying things, that I can, you know, pretty much make a demigod and create my own the God that lets me do what I want to do and live how I want to live, then that defeats the true and living God where he says, I don't desire that any would perish. Perish means to be away from him. But that all would come to repentance. So I have to repent. Not to people, but to God. What do I have to repent? Whatever God says in his word is sin, I have to repent and turn to Christ. And he makes me new. And I say that because I had to do that myself. It's been a very, I can be very transparent. And it's been a difficult journey, not with Christ, but because people look at you like you're, um, you think you're better. no. I just don't want to go back to where I was. I don't ever want to go back because there's nothing back there for me. And I say this for you with the love of Christ. It's nothing. It's emptiness. The walk of the flesh is emptiness. It's never going to fill us. We're going to feel depressed. We're going to feel lonely because without Christ, we can't make it. We'll be spinning our wheels. And so I say to you, my listeners, try Christ. Try the walk of the Spirit. I've never been disappointed. I've never been disappointed, and I don't believe I ever will be. I've been disappointed by people because they misjudged me. They might have um, you know, a lot of times people say, don't judge me if they're on the, 
you know, that they, they, they're, they're not necessarily in Christ. They may say, don't judge me, but actually they're judging you as you walk, as you try your best to walk in the newness of life. And it's nothing about nobody better than anybody else. I don't ever believe I'm better than anybody else. I am a sinner saved by grace. I was I was out there doing what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, and it just brought emptiness to me. And I wish and pray the same thing for other people to know Christ. Because he's real, he's truth, he can heal, he can deliver, he can set us free. Because the word says he has all power in his hands. And if he has all power in his hands, and he does, then he can set me free. There's no sin that can have me bound so much that Christ can't set me free. And again, we get back to sin. What is sin? It's not what Denise said. It's not what anybody else said. Not what mama or daddy said it is. Sin is what the Bible, God's word, says it is. At the end of the day. When we step into eternity, each and every one of us on this earth will step into eternity. We won't stay here forever. When we step out of this realm and into eternity, we're going to be, we're going to stand in the presence of the living God. And we want to hear him say, well done. We don't want to hear God say, depart from me, for I never knew you. What does knew you mean? New means I never had a relationship with you. So we must walk after the Spirit. We must walk after the Spirit and lay aside. The Word says lay aside every weight that causes you to be hindered of getting to me. Lay it aside. When we see scriptures, Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee and he sees Peter and his brother and, and Jesus says, follow me. They left it all. They laid it all down. And they followed him. What are we willing to give up to follow Christ? To walk after the Spirit and not after our flesh. We live in a time, yes, that many walk after the flesh because the word also says that wide is the road that leads to destruction and many go thereby but narrow is the way that leads to life and few find it i admonish you today those that are listening to this podcast go the narrow way why is it narrow because Jesus is the only way. The word says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, not you, not me, not mama, not daddy, no man goes to the Father but by me. Christ is the door of redemption. He's calling us to him. The unrest we feel is because he's calling us to him. He's calling us to surrender, to lay aside to so that he can deliver and set us free from all of our sin, all of our hurt, all of our disappointments, all of our church hurt, anything that we have had in our lives. He's calling us to be redeemed. According to God's word, we cannot live any kind of way. That's not scripture. That's not scripture. And you will never hear on this podcast of Hope in Christ with Denise, nor will you hear on Building Literacy and True Identity, will you ever hear me say anything else but what the word says. It's not, my opinion is not important. So I admonish you today, try Jesus. Walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your word. I pray and ask, O oh God, that we would all, in this world that we live in now, that we would be that remnant that would turn to Jesus, 
that we would be redeemed and set free and that when we enter eternity we will enter your rest thank you for your word today God in Jesus name amen thank you all for listening be blessed and continue to hope in Christ Jesus our Lord our Savior the only true and living God Walk in your true identity because it's only found in Christ. Thank you for listening.